So it's spooky season and Halloween Ends has come out and it's been kind of making the rounds on the internet as a very divisive end to a trilogy and to a character, Michael Myers, because spoilers, he does die, uh, but this whole review is full of spoilers, so yeah. Is it as bad as people say or is it misunderstood? And I've been pondering this question for a little bit, thinking it over and the themes and ideas, and I gotta say, I think it's a bit of both. It's about on the same level as Jurassic World and Spider-Man No Way Home. It's not as cynical as Jurassic World, because it actually does seem like an actual genuine attempt to be an end. But it doesn't have as many really good emotional scenes as Spider-Man No Way Home. It still has a couple good scenes, but still. Either way, I'm just going to be straight up talking about the movie, kind of just like my thoughts, not really in that much of an order. I'll just talk about like the positive for, positives first and then like the negatives. So the first good thing I have to say is that Laurie's done pretty well. I have to say her character is interesting despite it not making sense for her moving on because like in Halloween 2018 I would understand her moving on it's a little bit weird that she wants to continue being that he only killed like five people but I guess it could kind of make sense all right fine maybe you wouldn't want to move on it would make more sense following two as canon but all right her not moving on I guess could kind of make sense but after all the chaos he's caused it doesn't really make sense that she'd move on and said it actually probably motivate her more but all right that aside, Lori has done pretty well. I do like her character. She has several cool scenes where she talks to Corey about like the evil inside of him and stuff like that. I don't remember all of it, but she's interesting. I do like that she befriends him and kind of, you know, feels bad because, oh, they weren't. They're both kind of like the freak shows at some point. You know, Lori wasn't really. Actually, I think they're kind of both in the movie kind of freak shows. They're not really like. I guess to an extent, they're both like kind of a bit of outcasts. Lori is kind of being a bit blamed for Michael Myers. Which I guess kind of is an interesting idea about how after all the chaos the town cause will just kind of find anyone to blame. But that's kind of an undercooked theme I'll get to later. But I do like that she befriends him. It's kind of interesting. And I do like that she does eventually obviously realize that this dude is like fucking crazy. And does kind of like advise her daughter to be smart. Or no, granddaughter. I keep forgetting Karen was her daughter and she died. Um, I do like that. Her character's done pretty well. So I have to say pretty much on everything about Lori is, is, is mostly good. So I liked her character. There are a couple good kills. There's one in the radio that's that's pretty gnarly. Uh, there's some in the hospital. Not hospital. Is it a this random house with these two? One of whom is cheating. Uh, they're decent kills. Um, I think there's one where like this kid gets ran over and then his head like it's curb stomp. No, I think it's a she. But either way, that was pretty good. There's a couple memorable kills that you are going to remember, including Michael Myers, who does get like definitively killed, which I'm not really sure how I feel about, but we'll get to that. Uh, I think, yeah, I'll actually get to that because that kind of lines with the problem I have. Um, and speaking of Corey, I do like him as a character mostly. I wish he was introduced later. Or earlier, I guess, but I'll get to that. I do like Corey as a character. It's interesting to see what could potentially make a character snap and go crazy. And I do kind of like that it's kind of like more of a build up. It's not like immediately like 20, 30 minutes in. He only really accidentally kills someone like 40 or so minutes in, and then really kills someone after been, after like an adult tries to kill him and beat him up. Very obviously, like he very obviously implies it like 50 or so minutes in. So I do like that there's some build up, and it's an interesting idea, especially based off like the first scene where you like accidentally kill someone but i'm i'm also going to talk about that later because again there's quite a few problems because it's on the level of those movies i mentioned which aren't good they have more good than bad so yeah um but i do like his character it's interesting to see this person who could potentially snap and what can make someone snap it's an interesting idea um i'm glad that they didn't try to explain why michael could snap because that could just take away from his character but as we see with the movie it does his character does get unfortunately taken away from but i do like that that's an interesting idea the very little we see of Sheriff Hawkins is uh, actually pretty cool. I like his character. He's he's entertaining for the few moments he's in it. Um, Sheriff Barkley's in it for a bit. When he's in it, he's cool. Um, I guess there's one moment where like you thought Lori was going to maybe kind of kill herself. And that was kind of sad seeing how she being kind of isolated and all that stuff. And attempt to like kind of move on. It's kind of ironic. An attempt to move on. She kind of got brought back into it in a way. And almost made her kill herself. Well, not really, but it makes it seem like that. Now it's actually kind of emotional. But yeah, that's kind of about all the good things I have. I'll get into one thing. The side characters. Here's a problem. The The size of the movie, it feels like a very depressing end. 
after like the most interesting big shit has happened because this feels almost like small scaled compared to the others and i feel like it's because the filmmakers got too giddy and killed off two-thirds of the cast in the previous two movies so they're left with mostly a couple characters who get mostly sidelined Lindsay is barely in this movie if you're interested to see what she does she has like four scenes um yeah that's really it she's like four scenes or if not less where she does anything and it's not even that purposeful she kind of just even shows up in Lori's household. Uh, she wasn't even there the scene before. She just kind of shows up there. It's like, oh, uh, okay. Um, How the fuck are you here? All right. She's just kind of there. Hawkins, like I said, when he's in, he's cool. But he's barely fucking in it. He shows up nearly 30 minutes in and then shows up like at the very end where he was like, oh, I got a call about suicide because, you know, the whole Lori suicide thing. And then he kind of shows up a bit later. He's there for like two minutes. That's it. You just kind of see Michael's dead body, and then they go out where they kill him. It's just like, oh, all right, um, you're barely in it. Sheriff Barkley, he's in it for like five fucking seconds and has a singular line. This is not how it works. It is tonight. That's literally, like, the, the one fucking line I remember him having. I know he wasn't in Halloween 2018 that much. And he was barely in Halloween Kills, but he's in this so little. If you wanted to say he's in it for more than a minute, you'd have to count the blurry shots of him in, like, the background of when they're killing Michael Myers. It's just so pathetic and just weird. So those side characters get, like, mostly sidelined. And adding in these new characters is just kind of weird. Corey being this new character, I feel like, is weird. This sh The whole opening with the kid being killed... I know people have said this, but I think what it worked as an ending to Halloween Kills to show, like, because the whole idea was, like, the town will turn on itself and become monsters. That would have been the perfect epilogue had the scene be done better. But I'll get into that right after. Had the scene been done better, it could have been, like, okay, yeah, now we see this character who's maybe even set up on Halloween Kills as, like, this nice character who, uh, I don't know, maybe you kind of liked Allison or something like that. Uh, I don't know, just something like that, like a friend. You can see, oh, shit, this character that you actually see been Halloween and been Halloween Kills is, like, this bad thing happened, you know? And it would be kind of sad and tragic. But I'll get into the opening. Because while the idea for the opening is good. And could have obviously could have worked at the end of like Halloween Kills. I still think the opening isn't that good. Because while it does kill off a kid that's like holy shit got some balls. It's kind of contrived. Because they're walking around the house. Like he loses sight of the kid. And he sees his knife on the ground. And instead of picking up a, a new knife. So that if someone broke in and was using that knife. And you were accused of doing the crime. You could just be like yeah well that's the actual knife they were using. Do DNA and that shit and see if you can find someone. Or just like, I don't know, calling like the cops or the parents. He just goes up and takes it and gets his ass locked in a room by a kid some fucking out and screams, I'll kill you. Just so that conveniently when the parents come in, it sounds like I'll kill you and then kicks open the door. And the kid who's next to the door, which is way too close to the balcony, by the way, or whatever, like the railing, just get, get, get kicked off and then they'll be blamed for it. It's just a little too contrived. There's so many ways you could have stopped that. You could have just not said, I'll kill you. You could have been like, can you please let me out? I'm going to call your parents. Don't lock me out. He could have stayed in there and called his parents, being like, yeah, I got locked in or something like that, and just not picked up the fucking knife or some shit like that. I don't even know how he got locked in my fucking kid, but all right. So that shit was weird. That opening, while it's crazy that they kill off the kid, is also kind of contrived, so the whole thing doesn't even really make sense. I do like that the town doesn't really seem as like a normal person, but I think they could have done more subtly because these characters being so obvious assholes to him doesn't make sense after the 40-something deaths Michael Myers caused. And he was a normal-ish kid raised in like a nice house, and he still turned evil. So what do you think this kid who lives in a more poorish house that works in like this fucking place where you'd have to be a lot more physically strong to work in making fun of him. what the fuck makes you think that's gonna work you dipshits it's just really stupid and doesn't work so it just makes the characters of Adam feel feel like they actually kind of deserve it and while that maybe plays into the theme it's a bit too stupid to actually work and just kind of doesn't make me care about adam field it's just kind of like okay well now you're all pieces of shit even four years after the incident it's just kind of weird, and I don't really like it. It doesn't really work. It's just, I could see it maybe working, but just not in this way. If they were more subtly mean and condescending to him, it could work. Be like, all right, so you're not so obviously assholes, but you got even adult fucking police officers who are dating like 20-year-olds, which is a little weird, going after him. Like, holy shit, this town is like fucked, and you all deserve to die. It's just, it doesn't really work. It's weird. But I will get to the elephant of the room. Michael Myers vs. Laurie Strode and Michael Myers is a character. If you're expecting Michael Myers to fight Laurie Strode for at least a decent bit of the movie, you're going to be kind of disappointed. 
they don't really do that for much of the movie. It's not that much of it, and it doesn't really line up with the movie and feels kind of just half-assedly thrown in and just kind of forced and rushed. It feels mandated, and it's just only slightly interesting. And you do get to see what Michael Myers kind of looks like, and he looks like a fucking weird-ass crackhead. He kind of looks a little silly. And Michael Myers as a character is unfortunately a bit disappointing. His character... He basically is just four years after he's just kind of accepted his death and just kind of like stands there. He's just kind of there in the shadows. He, he gets a little better when I guess he's kind of like influencing Corey to do this shit, kind of like a mastermind from the shadows. But even then, he's just kind of like a fucking dweeb who just lives in the sewers. He even gets his ass kicked by Corey. So it's just it's just kind of depressing seeing this character who this might be the next realistic step, but it's not the next interesting step. It's just not scary. It makes him so much less interesting. When you know immediately after kills, he just waddles his ass into the sewers just to fucking be there for four years before Corey comes up and is just like, hey, um, I'm going to get choked by you. And then we're going to have like some weird scene where we just repeat the kid falling thing. And then I guess you're just going to let me go. And then later I'm going to like after I kill some people, I'm just going to come back and like beat the shit out of you in a really comical and weird scene. It's just so weird and makes his character so much less scary. He wasn't that scary in these movies. But at least he was killing people. He kills three people in these movies, including Corey in this movie, including Corey. Um, But I'll get to that, uh, his death and stuff. But two of them were already going to die because Corey kills himself and the other dude was getting beaten by Corey. So he really only kills one person. So he's so much less of an intimidating force in this movie and it really fucking sucks. He's just a downgraded character. He really feels like he's barely even in the shadows. He just feels so disappointing. And, um... Yeah, I guess I'll just get to the whole Corey kill thing. I think Corey could have worked. He does mostly work. Here's the thing. Here's the conclusion. If you like this movie, that is very understandable. It's kind of a tragic, sad movie, and it does work. And these movies are distinctive in their tone, and they have some good kills. This movie just kind of feels like two different stories about this dude going like, snap, like, snapping, like, what can make people snap? And Michael Myers and Laurie show like, a short film of them fighting each other just like 30 minutes longer just with like Lori talking about like moving on and shit just kind of like meshed together not very well it just doesn't work it feels very weird they both have interesting ideas but they're not fleshed enough out well mainly the second part with Lori and Michael Myers it just doesn't feel very fleshed on kind of like a sad depressing rushed end not in a good way because while a bunch of movies is sad and depressing in a good way because it kind of works that just doesn't work and Corey might have worked had he not killed himself. I thought they were setting up the whole evil will always live on. Well, he might have killed Michael Myers. He's just one version of evil. And Corey might have faked his death or lived on. But no, as far as I'm concerned, I think he literally just straight up dies. So it just kind of deflates the theme and idea. And it just kind of feels like, oh, kind of feels like a half-assed attempt to be like, okay, Michael Myers barely kills anyone. Let's have him kill this one, dude. So it just kind of feels a little disappointing. Like, oh, all right, you really didn't know what to do. Hmm, that's kind of sad. It just kind of feels like a depressing finale with some good elements. I really do like what they did with Corey's character. It just doesn't flesh. It, it's not. It just doesn't work out. And it's executed a little poorly. And the Michael Myers and Laura Stroh stuff is kind of cool, but it's way too rushed. This movie as a whole doesn't feel like a good Halloween movie. It kind of feels like a depressing end. Very small scale. They have a bunch of people show up at the end for Michael Myers to die. Like what they seem like Julian and their stuff. But it's mostly just side characters that are barely in the movie. And. All these random town folk. It just feels weird. Like a sad ending. Not in a good way. It's just kind of like, huh? You could have done a lot better. You had some really good ideas. And some good scenes that do work. But overall, it just doesn't mesh as a final project. It's entertaining. It's got some good ideas. Has a couple good kills. Some good bits of dialogue. And you can watch these movies. And they do kind of do their themes a bit well. But they don't really fully mesh together. Who knows? Maybe I'll do a retrospective of this whole trilogy or so. Maybe even with... Halloween 1978, which I've actually yet to fully watch uh, sometime later in like a year or two or something like that. You know, like a full like hour long retrospective on the themes and ideas because that'd be kind of interesting. See if it does fully work on. Who knows? Maybe I like the movie more or less. I don't know. For now, it's a disappointing end, but it's one that does try and I do commend it. And I do recommend you watch it because you won't really hate yourself that much watching it. There's just some stupid ideas, but it does take some admirable swings. I do make it at least a entertaining movie to an extent. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next video.